Pois é. Yeah, there's my uh, my Menards <laughs> curtains I bought to cover that. Menards. All right. Well, we're back. Another live from Torque Fest version of Black Magic TV, yeah. and with us today is some of you might know him. Um, <laughs> some he's a artist and a new resident. It's very odd because uh, uh, Max Grundy is who we have here with us today. Max moved to Kansas. Oh, that's cool. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Uh, <laughs> I've already said, like, this place sounds like a tin can. Like, they can bitch about the audio all they want. That's okay. Care. We're at a hot rod show. There's yeah. going to be some hot rods burning out. Yeah. It ain't have... done, though. I guarantee it's going to Oh, no, it's going to be like every 48 <laughs> seconds. Now, that the minute yeah. we decide to do this, it's going to do yeah. that. Max, an artist, um, professionally, I, I would say. That's yeah. Your, that's your job. For and better or for worse. Recently, a uh, transplant from California yep. to... The middle of nowhere, Kansas. Yeah. Well, I was a transplant to California from Utah originally. Right. That's where, so did you grow up in Utah? Yeah, I grew, I grew up in Utah. Uh, was there until I was 28. There it is. There it is. <laughs> grew up to there. there. <laughs> it was not that loud yesterday when we were so up loud. here, dude. It was no, you, Eric and I were in here filming and yeah. you couldn't hear those cars at all. It's like thunder. It's like yeah. if you hear it once, you know it's going to happen again. Hey, guys, you're Sorry, just going to have everyone. to deal with the hot rod noise. Oh, we got the mics. It's still picking up. We got the mics, so yeah, up. no yeah. stop talking. All right, so, yeah, I grew up in Utah until uh, I was 28 and always wanted to do a, be a professional artist. Um, and uh, I was actually an art teacher up in Utah. Okay. At so colleges, you, yeah. Did so you I, go to art school? You went well, to art? Well, I, I did an art degree. Art degree. I did a bachelor's in illustration. And then I did my master's in painting and drawing and art history. Okay. So always did all my education in the arts uh, and then um, got a teaching job, teaching Photoshop and Illustrator of all things. Um, because at the time there was like a, there was quite a need for that kind of thing in, in schools because people right. were kind of, I mean, this has been since 2002 or right. thereabouts, something like that. Um, but there was a, that was the new technology. And so there was quite a big need for people to, uh, be able to learn that stuff. And so I started, I got a job right out of, right out of college, started teaching, uh, to, to college students, illustrator, Photoshop. And then that turned into like a bunch of other design classes and art history and just everything you could imagine with, with, uh, teaching art. And then I did that for about five and a half years in Utah. And then um, got, uh, uh, I just always wanted to go be a professional artist. Right. Being Teaching was great, and I learned a lot from teaching and uh, was really grateful for the experience. Uh, but I, I wanted to go see if I could do it, be a professional artist. So me and my wife, we packed up everything, and we went to California and uh, started out in L.A., and then we were there in LA for I think five and a half years, something like that. And then when it got to the point where we wanted to have like a um, like a real house and like start a family, um, we decided to move to a little more suburbia area. So we moved out to Riverside. So in total, we ended up staying there for like 17 years, and it was great. You know, had a lot of great experiences doing art in LA and did a ton of shows and we traveled to so many countries some countries like I mean we had one year where we went to like nine countries in one year and it was just Whoa. it was crazy yeah and so just anytime we got invited to a show if they helped us out at all like gave us a booth helped with the flight if they did anything at all it was like we were gonna go right like we wouldn't miss any opportunity that we got so and plus we knew we were gonna start a family so it was like now we're young couple we can travel it's like let's do all of it now because when we get kids who knows what things are gonna you know you get kids right. and, and then change. you get dogs and then there's cats and there's all this stuff yeah. <laughs> happening you know and it's like it's not as easy to just pick up and leave as it as it used to be you know and so we did that and then uh it was great and then uh covid hit um like everybody like covid was a crazy time and we had a pretty sweet setup there in riverside like we had a little compound uh, nice mid-century house. It was all fenced in, all this stuff. And, uh, and then COVID hit, and it was just a kind of a crazy time. Like, they shut everybody down from working. 
they killed all the shows for really, you know, for like the a year. They just wiped out a year of shows. Right. So it was like when COVID hit, it was like at least a year was gone. Right. So that was a big part of income for us. And then uh, when all the rioting was going on, it was like they, they stopped, uh, you know, um, they, they had that they had they stopped enforcing a lot of the like the laws and stuff so we had uh we had a lot of you know like an influx of homeless coming in right and uh it was just kind of a crazy time you know it was just like suddenly it was like there was litter everywhere a lot more than there used to be a lot of homeless you know and i wish them the best you know it's hard time that they're going through i feel for them you know but also it's like it's kind of crazy because it was like a lot of drugs and stuff, you know. I remember, right? Yeah, we were, we were going through McDonald's drive-through one day with my kids, and there was, you know, like, you know, they have the curb, like there's curb going through the drive-through. There's this homeless dude sitting on the curb. He had his pants pulled down on the curb, and he's shooting up heroin into his leg. Yeah. And I was like. I think we're done here. I think yeah. this is not really what I want to raise my and kids it's around. A thing where it's like a failure on the people who are in control because they it is. they we yeah. all especially there where where we live at in Kansas City, we pay enough in taxes. Right. We pay in, in the county I live, I live in Wyandotte, so I live in Kansas City, Kansas. We pay our property our our all of our taxes are whole are yeah. higher yeah. than any other yeah. county in the uh, the the whole it's the most populated and it's yeah. the highest t- tax rate right. and it's like shouldn't this be evened out a little more here? right because <laughs> like, you are in a populated area it should be a little bit lower right yeah but uh, with that money we we have a similar issues right and and I'm not seeing them appropriate those funds uh, you know responsibly enough to like help the people they should be helping because I'm okay with paying taxes if you're helping people. Exactly. Well, and that was the problem with California is it was mismanaged, you know. Right. It was like we were paying, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, it was like close to nine grand in property taxes every year. Wow. Yeah. Nuts. Uh, and that was for a three acre property, house and a shop. Like it was nice. It was a nice setup. But it was a shitload of property taxes, you know. So we'd pay all that and it's like, and we still got to deal with all this litter and homeless and all this stuff going on. And it's like. I'm not really sure we're getting the bang for the buck that we wanted. And so when we up and decided to leave, it was like we had a cash offer on our house. Um, they paid a, a million cash for it and done. Wow. And so by the time that it was, uh, we had sold the house, we had found a house in Kansas that we loved and sold our house and moved to the new house in the span of a month. Right. So it was crazy. So like we moved really, really fast for, for like getting a house and actually moving to that house. It was really fast. But um, yeah, for me, I just, uh, you know, we just moved to this little town in Kansas and it's, it's a tiny little town called Iola. Uh, it does, it has everything that you want, you know, but I, but it's like still a small town, you know? So um, it's cool because you know, I'm so close to everything. You know, a lot of right. the shows I was already doing when I was in California were in the Midwest and almost all, but maybe two, I was traveling outside of California to go do. Right. So there was really nothing really keeping me in California. Other, you know? You're right. It's, except for this, the, the, uh, sunshine and it's yeah. like that facade, right? That like everyone thinks that like, yeah, it is a facade. They think that California is the center of car culture and hot rodding. Yeah. But in reality, it's, I, I really think it's the Midwest. I think that, well, I, I, I would probably, I mean, there definitely, there's historical ties to everywhere in the United right. States with hot rodding, but the light does get shined on California. And the irony is that the government doesn't want hot rodders there. Right. You know, the government of California wants, doesn't want old things at all. Right. Like doesn't want old buildings unless they're retrofitted with a bunch of like, you know, stuff that can waste taxpayers money to make it appear like it's more environmentally friendly. Um, but they're happy to just bulldoze things down because that creates jobs for their union buddies. And um, then they can say they're being green. 
but in reality they're not being green, but they are blasting a lot of money into the unions and stuff there. So they're tied with the unions and that's fine. You know, a lot of people on your audience might be tied with the union and that's fine, but there definitely is something to be said for, you know, people doing, uh, buddy deals with yeah people get mad at me sometimes i'm not a big union guy um i i see the uh because i you know i've I've always done body work and worked in hot rods and stuff and i've i've always worked in an industry where you have to be good to to make money right and it's it's not like, about being with a union. It's how good are you? Right. And I, I, I have other buddies that struggle because they're really good at their trade right. and they work in a union and they go, why is this idiot here with me making the same money? And right. He can't do, <laughs> he doesn't problem. know what he's doing. That's I spend exactly half my time problem. redoing the things. Right. And it's, my experience uh, with unions is uh, like with shows. Right. So if I'm in a show in Las Vegas, you know, it's, it's not about just getting the job done. It's you got to go through the right channels. The unions can do this or that. And so, it, again, it's, it comes down to it's not who's the right man for the job. It's are you tied with the union and are you doing everything the correct union protocol? Right. And so that's my problem with the unions is that uh, it doesn't seem like it's logical oftentimes, that it's a lot of favors for people that are maybe not have a very good skill set. Yeah, and, and I hear my buddies talk and they're like, we're on this job. And he's like, we've done, I've done nothing. Like my buddies constantly tell me I'm doing nothing. I'm just, I sit around most of the day. Right. That he's like, they get mad at me if I like, there's no like get or done attitude. There's it's, not a get or done attitude. It's like yeah. uh, how long can, and I think it used yeah. to be that way. Right. Like yeah. it was about committing. It was about craftsmen getting yeah. equal, equal rights. Right. Yeah. So and I think maybe not a, a, a very, uh, you know, well received take, but I think maybe uh, the unions had a, um, they had a purpose, right? W- well before we had workers' rights and more right. equality yeah, in maybe, America. Yeah, and, and maybe Henry Ford's time, like that, was really useful to have unions because they were exploiting workers right. and making them work these fourteen-hour days, which isn't right. But either, those same you know? workers' rights now apply to everyone, not Correct. just the union right. people. Like That's right. you, you achieved what you set out to do. That's right. There's a whole the thing. The pendulum I, has I, swung the whole the opposite I, way, but they're still treating them as they have the same kind of challenges that they did 70 years ago. This is my thing with the unions. They, they all secretly, they, they vote Democrat. They spout Republican propaganda, but in reality, they're all, the only co- people doing communism in America. <laughs> like that's, that's, it's not a bad take, actually. Yeah. So it's, it's like you have no idea what you are, man. You have yeah. no. It's it's all pol- it's all politics too. Yeah, that whole thing, and is. I don't care for you know. I can't vote. I don't care to. Yeah, I'm I mean, not- I I think we're a meritocracy in America, and especially in the hot rod world, it's like if you don't know how to do your car then your car doesn't run. So there's an instant like payback for like what your skill set is, you know? And if something breaks on your car, it's like if you have that skill, you're able to fix it right away. So I think like for car guys and hot rodders and stuff like that, we have a different sort of take on this because we instantly, you know, see the results of what our skill set is. Whereas that's not really the, that world. Right. That world isn't really so much about you know, so I think a meritocracy makes sense to car guys. Yeah. If you know how to fix your water pump, then your car starts running again. Right. If you know where you're getting a ground, you know, shorting out, then you get to keep a charge on your battery. Right. You know, so it's, it's simple, like, uh, cause and effect and cause and effect is not really with a lot of how unions run. I don't think. Yeah. And you know, it's a thing like, uh, I also have union guys that like outside the union, like Dave Sprinkle that has that Econo line. Mm-hmm. Dave's a union uh, carpenter. Right. I but have I mean, tons of Dave, friends. Dave yeah. gets in and gets stuff done. Right. Yeah, you and, can't like, say it's across the board. No, it's sure. not across the board. Yeah, no, you know, definitely it's, not. It, and there's certain things like the 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 factories. Maybe you know, I think those. I I tell people a lot of times. I think the unions screw up the um, the little guy. Because they make it to where, you know, the the guy who is really good can't charge what he's really worth because then people go, well, this isn't a union gig, so I'm not going to pay you that much. And it's like, well, it's not about, it's about doing who does the best work, not who does the That's cheapest right. work. You That's know true. what I mean? Yeah. Um, now, Max, were you always into 
the I, I for lack of a better term I'll, I'll say the custom culture scene the lowbrow art scene I guess yeah, I mean, was Roth was already in Utah at that time right? yeah he so, was I think Roth died in what 99 I think so um, yeah so I had met Roth back when he was living in Utah about 90 right before he died yeah you know, I, I had talked to him a couple times and that was before he passed away and so but that was when I was like really getting into it you know right. about 99 um well i shouldn't really say that i mean i grew up with old cars we always had old cars at our house muscle cars mostly you know we had yeah. a lot of chevelles mustangs camaros malibus uh all that kind of thing my brothers were really into that uh into fixing up their muscle cars um but i kind of learned that i liked 50s stuff you know so i from a young age got really interested in classic trucks and hot rods and low riders and stuff like that that was kind of you know coming out of california or that we saw coming out of california even though utah had a huge hot rodding scene still does yeah. you know i um, mean bonneville it's like come on right you know, yeah it's, it's an epicenter for sure again i think the entire middle of the country it yeah. seems to be it's it's weird because too like right like the culture thing because in kansas city like rockabilly has been gone for years like mm -hmm. that whole thing right but the car culture still exists it's right. just more rock and roll right, right. everywhere it's more punk rock more, than it is or more like outlaw country and more yes. like that kind of stuff that kind of stuff yeah, not the bump it bump it bump it yeah 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 which when, when i come up here it's sort of weird for me yeah. because i forget that how north we are like i never realized that i don't ever think right. like like I've never been in Milwaukee and people are like, you're like right there, dude. Like just go. Nice. And I'm like, I don't know eh, what for, you know, <laughs> right. like, but it's like weird. It's a weird, yeah. it's a culture shock coming up here for just being yeah. in the car culture. Cause it's so different than. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, but, but, and, and as far as art goes, I've always been an artist always since I can remember. Uh, I mean, as far back as preschool, I can remember um, sculpting with food and my teachers would like that I would make a sloppy Joe sandwich look yeah. like a face. Yeah. <laughs> and that was like my earliest memory of like making something right. that people liked. Right. And I think that became hook for me early on was to make things that people enjoyed and make them happy, you know, like that made them feel good or made them feel something adventure, anger, uh, sadness, happiness, whatever, you know, making somebody feel something is a really powerful thing. So I learned that from a very young age, uh, about, uh, influencing people, I guess. And, um, the car just sort of went along with that and, you know, throughout college and whatnot. I mean, I think the cars were always there, even though maybe my college work was more, you know, young max kind of stuff. Right. Uh, and I really kind of fell into my style. I think about 2001, like right after September 11th happened, I really sort of, sort of looked at art a little bit differently. Like it became more propaganda-ish to me. Right. And uh, although growing up in the 80s, I think that graphic poster style art stuff always appealed to me because of like skate decks and right. snowboard decks and the clothing that we wore. You know, I'm 47, but it was like, you know, I grew up in the prime of the 80s and the prime of skateboarding, you know, it was like, if you weren't skating, it was like, you weren't cool, really. Yeah, I always think of like the old flip decks, like the Cheech and Chong deck uh -huh. and like that style, like, like, uh, Dirty Donnie, like, yeah. uh, I'm a big, I'm a big Zorlap, fan of Donnie. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, uh <laughs> the Pal Peralta stuff. I mean, I can, I, like I would Puss tell, head, like I would tell Puss Head, stuff. yeah, and like, Caballero, I remember telling Cab, like, one of the first times I ever met him, I was like, one of my first things with art was restoring old Caballero decks. Oh, cool. Um, and that we, me and my brother, we would, like, mask off the paint and we would repaint it. Like, we would create stencils and stuff yeah. and try to recreate it and paint with brushes and whatnot. And uh, so a lot of my, and, like, just stuff like going to, like, the local skate shop, it's like, We'd skate over the skate shop, even though none of us had any money, just to look at the new skate decks that were right. on the wall. And it was like, they were so colorful and like that smell of like the skate shop right. and the smell of the wheels, the slime ball wheels and yeah. like, uh, you know, all those things that were associated with skateboards, like all that stuff carries through to hot rodding. Right. You know, like the paint, the graphics, the material, 
you know, the urethane and all of this stuff and the, you know, the steel, the trucks. It's like all these materials are stuff that we kind of took from the 80s and it just carried right over until we got older and we're interested in cars. Right. And those, you know, it's a big crossover, you know. It's the outlaw attitude, too, you yeah. know, that that is with hot rodders, the same as with skateboarders, you know. Yeah. And I, it's the same thing we've seen, like, that happen again with, like, the motorcycle culture. Definitely, like, yeah. There's, like, a big influx of that with yeah. that. Um, yeah. Now, on your art, like, it's very... Um, it is like I do like the the propaganda. I'm like I'm like big on propaganda because I always feel like they Dave actually one time I was freaking out about something years ago, and he's like, "Dude, you're an idiot." And I'm like, "What?" He's like, "This isn't real," and he pulled out an old newspaper article and showed me. He's like, "Look, this is the same thing from 1972," yeah. and it's like, "That's true." Oh, and like so I dig that about yours, but you also have this like Mad Max. Yeah. like Armageddon type influence with it that's yeah. like and very it's very like uh, man I'm like big into Cold War stuff so like I really like that yeah, all that thanks, nuclear man. fusion stuff and yeah I mean it definitely has a lot of that in it you know that we have that sort of Cold War vibe you know it's heavily influenced from like different cultures propaganda right uh, styles because you know in World War II all of all the cultures involved in World War II all had their sort of take on propaganda. Right, yeah, yeah. Whether it was American, German, Finnish, French, whatever, English, they all had their own kind of propaganda that they put out. And typically it was reduced down, graphic, you know, so it's like skateboarding and the graphic arts of the 80s partially came out of that. Right. Just of, you know, an, uh, uh, a need to represent something minimally. So it could be reproduced easily and shot out to people fast. So it convey a message quick, efficiently, and that's you know I think that carries over into the generation in the '80s and then into today. So you know for me I I, I like that stuff a lot. I like um, the idea of the American classic car as like a symbol. You know I right. think you know there's nothing really more American than. A, cl a hot rod right you know um because the great thing about i think americans is that we're not really ones to accept rules right you know nobody nobody in america really you know you could tell them a rule or you could tell them a law but that's like that's taunting them to break that law right and to figure that out and i think that's uh that stems a lot from that we're kind of mutts in our country, you know, like we're, we're uh, a country that, you know, has so many influences. There's a lot of people that have native influences in their bloodline. There's a lot of people that have European influences in their bloodline. And we kind of come from all over. And I think that fact that we are a mix, we're a culture of immigrants and we're a mix of peoples um, with different backgrounds and different cultural story I think that that is really what makes us so unique and right. such a strong uh, force as far as like innovation. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we are very innovative people and I think that's expressed in something as simple as like, you know, solving your fuel pump problem on your car. It's like, okay, this doesn't work. This is how the factory is not going to work with this application. How can we do it? So it will work. Right. So we're innovators by nature. Right. You know, car guys and bike guys, we are, we are known to customize. And that, you don't realize, that's not really, it's not really so much a Japanese thing. And it's not really so much a European thing. You yeah. know, like, you know, if you have experience with German people, they're very into the rules. And Japanese people are highly into the rules. What are the rules? You know, what are the guidelines that fall it in? And Americans look at the rules and they just, they're like, no, we're not doing that. You know? Yeah, you do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. And, and in fact, whatever the rules are, do the opposite of that. Right. And that's, that's the American mindset. And so I think that that Case is... Case in point, like, don't do a podcast in a metal room with loud people would say don't do what we're doing right now and case like, in point no, yeah just don't do it just don't do it <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah, go into a tin just, box it's gotta, like he's making what's your work around gonna be you yeah gotta, you gotta don't just do it my it. other option is don't do it and yeah. i was like god this is the right. one time i'm gonna be able to get all these different people in one place you know right I mean? which yeah. i was telling somebody else it's like i 
I really just need to come down. I, Eric and I were like, why haven't we gone down there it's to pretty see close. him yet? It's yeah. like we're not far at all from you. I know. I mean, Kansas City to Iola, it's like an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes yeah. difference. So it's really close, but it's, it's kind of a world of difference. Yeah. You know, Kansas City is pretty city. You well, know? it's even worse that we were just um, like we just went to Fort Scott for to like go do get right. some junkyard parts from our buddy Jason, uh-huh. and then I went to Nevada to buy a Missouri to buy. And it's like I could just stop by. <laughs> yeah, like, it's right there. To call you. Yeah. And it's it's been cool, dude. Like to um, you know, I've been blessed with like I. I, I learned a long time ago, like, working venues and, and being around, like, touring music acts and stuff. Like, you just treat people like people, and then they will respect you, like, people who have, are in the public eye, right? Mm-hmm. And then they will just treat you like a person. And yeah. I remember, like, John introducing me to you, and I already knew your art. But then, ever since then, it's just... You, it's like, oh, there's Max, you know? Like, he's, yeah. there's our buddy. And well, when I moved to California, I remember meeting a couple artists... Yeah, and I was like big fans of their artwork, and I, I, and they were just they just kind of really let me down. Yeah, I was like, ah, that's not the douchebag vibe is not cool to me. Yeah, you know, like to act like a douchebag, and you're such a great, awesome badass. It's like you're not. You might only be here for five more minutes. Yeah, you know, and you might, uh, you know, something. You know, we're all here temporarily. You know, very fleeting. You know, do your best to leave a good impression. So for me, I always try. I'm not saying I'm perfect at it for sure, but I always try to leave people smiling or make them feel like they got a good deal or maybe got a little bit more than they were expecting. Because I don't want anybody to say, you know, that Max Grundy artist, he's terrible, this, you know. It's inevitable that you're going to have people like that. Right. You can't do anything about it. But you can not be a total asshole too, you know. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's been cool to watch as like, Everyone in the traditional hot rod scene, because that was booming. Years ago, it was booming, right? It was Mm -hmm. like the biggest shit in the whole country. There were magazines and, you know, from like 2002 to uh, um, uh, I would say almost 2010, it was probably one of the biggest car scenes in the country. I would even say like up to 2014. I mean, I think of it around like, because I remember seeing like old school rods in when I walked into... uh, I walked into uh, uh, Barnes and Noble. I think it was 2003, and I just remember like that magazine jumped off the pay off of the newsstand. I mean, yeah, because it was so different from everything else right. that was on the newsstand. Everything was so polished and refined and so corporate looking. Yeah, and here you have this home built magazine where they're just like, you know, we're doing things our way. It was just a very American phenomenon that happened, and and so that really, I think part of that it's all cyclical you know with, right. with with car stuff you know one thing will come and be hot for a while but i think still what appeals to that to people i think is the the do-it-yourself quality you know yeah. people love that you know and they don't like the corporate quality of it because most people aren't buying and building their cars with a huge budget of 60 70 grand 200 grand all this these crazy numbers i know? think that's why you see like especially like the people i know in the car you know i used to be in the punk rods but like i think that's why the punk rock scene when those people get it's like a couple things happen punk rockers like get older and they become greasers or they become bikers you know what right. i mean or they yeah. just stay the same right but a lot of them get into the to old cars yeah because they're affordable yeah, they were. Uh, it was something you could do. Well, and their a art, hobby, and it's art, right? You know, and these punk rock guys and the skater guys, you know, they're guys that are into the art, right? And they're into the music, and so what does that translate into when you get older? Artistic cars and rockabilly music, you know, yeah. and it's 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 interesting, you know, but it is all the same kind of stuff, right? You know, it is the soup of art mechanics building stuff culture music and it's all just diy that's all it's all the DIY. same kids that were throwing shows in basements or the same people throwing car shows that's right the, they were throwing know. they were throwing shows they were building skate ramps and you know they're building hot rods right you know? and we had dads or brothers when we were into that that kind of started getting us into the building stuff and it's like and my dad when i was 15 was like having me climb underneath my 52 Chevy truck and grease it. 
right. you know, and like changing out the brakes and learning how to break down drum brakes and rebuild them and all this shit that I didn't want to do. Yeah. But it's like, you know, he taught me how to do it. So even though I was interested in other stuff, it was like that kind of transitioned me into what the next thing was. So, um, but what I was, what I was originally going to say was it's been cool to watch as the entire, this scene, like really saw what you were doing and appreciated it. And it was, it's been even cooler to watch as like, it's grown now to where like, I'll see dudes at like the streetcar events wearing like one of your shirts or like a sticker on the car. Mm -hmm. And it's been cool. Like when you got to do that, like uh, Disney thing with the car stuff was super cool. And the SEMA shit that you're able to do. So it's been cool to watch as like every, it's like one of those moments when you sit back and you're like, I was as like a fan. You're like, I knew, I knew about this before anyone else. Thanks, <laughs> so like, man. Yeah, it's cool to see. And it's, it's well deserved, man. Like, Thanks man. I appreciate that. A I lot. know how much we're lucky to be around like good, people in the yeah. industry you know a lot of people you know like john that puts on torque fest it's like you know john it, you know he looks out for for people yeah you know it's like uh john will you know you could count on john like having your back when you're not in a room with somebody who right you know what i mean like might say something this or that and he'll be like wait a minute you know that's not true you know, that's the kind of guy John is, is he, he'll have your back when you're not in the room. Oh, man. You know? He's one of, like, three or four people that no matter how bad, like, when I was all messed up on drugs and committing crimes and doing all the things I shouldn't have been doing, no matter what happened, he never... That's true. Him and Kim never turned their back on me uh, to the fault of all these people telling them, don't let, don't trust him. I But I, because of that, I never... I have never, like, I would never, you know, I came up here, this was like my way of like almost trying to do good for all the bad I was doing was helping mm -hmm. John with this because of the cause, you know, but yeah. they've never, I'll do anything for them. They've never, they've, yeah, they've always had my definitely back. Definitely no how what. they are. And I think our culture in general is a lot of yeah. that, you know, I think the people there we're, we're, you know, we're the supportive type, you know, we're loyal type, you know, would rather take somebody covered in tattoos and tattooed on their face than the most clean cut dude that'll stab you in the back when you're not right. around, you know? I think that's kind of the people I think that we're attracted to. Yeah, and there's something like, I it, it's I forget how many years this has been going on and how many of them I've come to, and then the other, the Iron Evasion, and then the, the uh, Retro Rewind, all the stuff John's done and all the things I've gone to. And then when I get here, and I realized, like, oh, man, there's all these people I know from all over. Yeah. And it's like, oh, shit, I haven't seen you guys in a couple of years. So it's yeah. always fun because there's, like, all these people I've become friends with. It's definitely a, a high school reunion kind yeah. of vibe because you do these shows year after year. And it's like you, you definitely, you know, you. and if you're like us where we're kind of transplants and I guess we're nomads a little bit. You know, I mean, we've only barely been in, in California and in Kansas. But, you know, when you're not living near family, the people you work with become your family. Right. And uh, and I think that that's, uh, you know, definitely uh, a consequence of of being carnies, you know, which we are kind yeah. of carnies, you know, is you you collect these people that have the same interests and and it's not necessarily blood, but. You know, you're con you're com you're connected by um, by similar interests and desires and like, goals. And, right. Yeah. Now, right before you left Cal in California, you had, you guys had a shop operating, right? You guys mm -hmm. were now. Are you? Yeah. Is that something you're going to pursue again now in Kansas? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, for me, the art and cars are inseparable. Right. Um, you know, uh, I just can't ever see myself not working and building on cars and I'm aesthetic guy you know like I don't really I'm not interested in rebuilding a carburetor right. very much or all that stuff my dad wanted me to do as a kid but I love the style and the attitude and the design of old cars you right know? so you know and no one builds a car by themselves no matter what people no, say not at all they're lying if they say that so you always have a group of people and one person specializes on the carburetor rebuild or why your engine is ticking or whatever but that's not really what I'm interested in. However, I am extremely interested in putting cars together, customizing cars, because you know, cars and customizing cars, hot rods and customs, is, is an art form. 
And I'm interested in all art forms uh, a little bit. The great thing about cars is it encompasses all types of visual arts in yeah. one form or another. You know, you have sculpture, you have 2D, you now even have digital aspects that you can bring into old cars with all this 3, 3D printing and stuff like right. that. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you have woodworking that you can bring into it. And so there's this craftsmanship a angle, but then there's also the creative angle. So for me, I'm never going to, you know, old cars make me happy. Right. You know, and so that's always going to be a part. Uh, we're in this weird transitional phase right now where we don't have a shop. Well, that's not true. We do have a shop in Kansas, but um, it's not quite, it's mostly for storage. Right. You know, we want to work out of our backyard, really. I mean, we right. like to work at home. So we will have to build something to make that happen. And right now we're just getting through it. You know, we yeah. have, you know, we have a nice house and we have eight acres of land, but, uh, and we have a sh uh, old horse barn that's becoming an art studio. But as far as a place to work on cars, we don't exactly have that yet. I just kind of work out of my garage. Yeah. And so it's not ideal, but, you know, that's how life goes. You know, sometimes Dude, stuff's I'm, not ideal. I'm the you know? king of not ideal. I've been working in the backyard and out of my parents' yeah. shop when I can. And yeah. I get it. Um, Got to keep doing cars. Keep we do, yeah. We've done a car every year for SEMA since 13. Cool. And I, we only missed the one year when it was COVID. Right. Uh, so that's been, you know, thir uh, uh, we've been doing car every year for, it'll be, this year will be 11 years and we've only missed one that we've put out new cars. And some of those years we did multiple cars in one year. Yeah. The first year, I think we did several, but we had a team of different people that right. all did it. And some of them were just like wraps and different wheels and stuff. But you know, that year we did in 13 we did a bunch of cars and then uh again in uh what was it like uh um 20 19 maybe 19 we did a, a big cab over build and a fin car for yeah for one year that was a tough year doing two cars but we always try to at least do one car per year um that we that we showcase at sema and i love sema it's like you know, it really is one of my favorite shows. It's like Comic Con for car nerds. Yeah, it is, and it's corporate, and it's like, you know, there's a lot of money there, but it's also, you know, when I say corporate, that sounds really lame, but it's like, it's nice that everybody's so clean and put together, and it's very businessy, and you get super high end, innovative people in those positions. Right. You know, it's not like it's you know bad corporate it's like you have the people who are at their top of their game who are there and talking about innovations and what's coming up next and what we can do with the past and, and that and i think that's a really for me a really appealing part about sema you know but then you have shows like this that are culture shows and they're a little bit grimy and and they're fun too you know yeah. it's just you have different type of goals for those for semas shows. i've never got to go i've wanted to go because i know it's the place you can go where you do get to see like what's coming next like what yeah. products are coming out yeah i'm dude i'm big on the 3d printing thing mm -hmm. i'm getting way into that like i have a buddy that prints and realizing now that i can make custom emblems for my cars that i build yeah. and like some other yeah. things that I want, interior pieces, and then mold them, and yeah. then have them cast off the mold. And Yeah, my or, buddy was just sending me logos that he had 3D printed for, like, forward-look logos. Yeah. And they're, like, thick, and they're three-dimensional. He made them, like, a, from a flat graphic to a three-dimensional logo. Right. Uh, that's, like, layered, and they're all 3D printed. He was sending them to me at the show. And yeah. it's just, it's really neat to see where that stuff takes us, you know? Yeah, and then to, like... AI stuff like I've 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 dove in on AI because as a person that like I work with you know Nico Lynn so Nico and I that's like my little brother and we're always doing stuff together and I can't always convey to him like the image that's in my brain mm -hmm. so I've learned how to use AI art things mm -hmm. to be like hey instead of me trying to it's like me telling a drummer like hit the boop bop boop bop beep bop and they look at you like what the hell are you talking about it's like hey dude like this is like this is i i see this but i need i want your like use this as like uh inspiration yeah, yeah. And, and create your It'd art definitely be interesting to see where it comes from i have yeah. serious concerns about ai because right. of like you know what it's gonna do to artists i mean you have these people that run these instagram pages and they have like a gajillion followers and they don't know how to make fucking shit right they don't know anything about art they're just plugging it into a software program and it's kicking it out an image 
and in that aspect of it, I'm going to sneeze. In that aspect of it, I, I hate, but there's definitely going to be some pluses <coughs> with it, you know? Yeah. It, in the video <coughs> world, it's like, so I, I put up the clips. And I was like, okay, like knowing like what it takes to edit video. Because I've learned how to do all this in the last couple of years. I just took off, got some help from friends, of course. And I continued to try to make it better, look better, sound better. Like, how, how do I get better at this? Because, again, I'm just a body man, you know? Like, yeah. that's all I really am. And it, I was, like, noticing people put all these short clips of their shows up. And I'm like, how is this possible? And then one day I stumbled upon this company that makes these they, it uses ai to go through and it cuts the clips up but it like grades them also on like based off of the current algorithms of all the That's social crazy. medias so but it puts the 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 text on there and you can design it and style mm -hmm. it and put your logo and all this stuff but i mean it cost me a hundred dollars like a year to get enough time to do all the episodes but what it would take me time, I would never be able to do it otherwise. Yeah. Because you would have to hire someone full time to edit That's true. and just pull the clips and I mean, it's it's crazy what it does. Yeah. But it also sucks because part of me feels like sometimes like you know, everyone wants you to pay now. Like yeah. remember when Instagram was first started and it was just the feed as people posted. Yeah. And you got to see everybody's stuff. Yeah. And you knew when you scrolled through yeah. and you got back to, oh, I already saw this one. You knew, okay, boom, yeah. I've seen all the new stuff. Right. Well, they knew if we got, if we changed that, then you never, you would never stop. You, you never stop. That's right. And yeah. so now, but, but you don't see everything. And I hate, I wish, right. I wish somebody would come out and not care about making it so addictive yeah. as it is making it more of a resource tool. Like well, that was what be. Instagram started as, but right. then it turned into that. You know? Right. It did. It was so good because it, you got to see everyone, everyone that you followed. Yeah. Every, you saw everything if you That's scrolled right. through. That's right. But um, I think they catch that now and they're like, oh, this is like a like even when I post YouTube videos, I have to like let them know like no, this is real. Like there at least there's that. So like if you post up something you, like there's all these AI songs going up now uh -huh. that people are doing that are kind of funny, yeah. but they have to label them as like, hey, this is made or like. They'll take like the videos of Joe Rogan and someone else and the guys will cut them together and it's like a whole different conversation. Right. They have to put that that's what that is, that this isn't right. a real thing now or they'll remove it. Right. But it's like a, it's, it's, I, I'm anxious to see where it goes. Yeah. I think it's going to, um, I told somebody the other day, I, it's not all bad, but it's not all good, right? Yeah, that's like, true. And I told them, I was like, it's going to be like social media. You either get in now and figure these things out and yeah. understand it at the a minimum. The box is definitely open. Right. Yeah. Or ten year, five, ten years from now, you're going to be the guy that's just like I am. I'm just doing this. Several years after saying I was going to do this, I, I'm doing it. I right. did. It took me several years, right? And I should have started from Jump Street. It's the same thing. Oh, I'm not going to use Instagram. Well, yeah. you know, oh, I'm not going to use TikTok. I'm not, it's, if you're going to be doing certain things, then you got to get on them early or yeah. you're going to miss the train. Yeah, that's true. So I think it's a good thing to just know how it works. Yeah. You can't hurt to know how it works. But then you can also spot it. That's true. That way, you know, like, okay, yeah. I already know what this is. This yeah. is because there's in no way, like I've messed with it a lot and like, just sitting there, just prompting this thing, just trying to understand, how do I speak to you? Even just chat GPT before it was um, image creation, before they could even do that, I got on and was like learning how, how do I talk to this computer and like, can I, but of course me, I'm like trying to convince it that it's Skynet and that it's good. like, like, are you, I'm like asking, are you Skynet? Like, it's like, no, sir, I'm not. And so it's like, you can get some funny <laughs> stuff, right? But it's just it's just interesting to know how it works and and what it's made from, like what they're actually programming. Because like I don't know, it's like thinking there's some like secret government cabal. It's like really deep down, there are conspiracies, but it's not like the CIA as a whole has these giant operations. It's like right. those people are working. 
rogue agents, I guess is what you would call them, maybe. But it's like there might be a guy who's like, I got a plan. Let me try it out. And then you got like the government smuggling cocaine for the Contras, right? right. Like that's how <laughs> yeah. that shit happens. Yeah. It's not like the CIA was like, well, we're going to smuggle it's drugs. It's not all good and it's, it's not, not all, all good bad. and it's not all yeah, bad. It's, it. it's same, That goes for anything. Police. That's true. All the people here. They're not all good, and they're not all bad. That's There's right. going to be all kinds of people no matter where you go. It doesn't right. matter. You know, I tell people all the time, like, the only race is human being. Like, everything yeah. else is just... Which is a super unpo- unpopular opinion to have. Because, right, but it's called the human race. Yeah. There's, like, it's not... We don't label dogs by by race. Yeah. We label them by breed. Yeah. Um, but, like, humans are humans, man. It doesn't... There's, uh, there's people that like comic books and anime, and they could be from anywhere in the world but i you better believe it. it doesn't matter what they look like on the outside all those people you can you know them and they're the same no different That's than true. car guys yeah it, I, I know these people and it doesn't matter how they look on the outside right. there's like these elements that everyone has right that makes that that draws you all together That's and true. it's it's uh I, I love the thing i love the most is nothing else matters at these things right like it doesn't matter your I your politics don't matter, your um, sexuality doesn't matter. Uh, nothing matters when you get these car people together, other than we're here because of all these cars and this yeah. art and this music. And none of the, it's like a nice break where none of that shit. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter in the yeah, modern that's age. That's true. That's true. So it's been it's cool. I, that's what I, keeps me going because I yeah. I hate I I just. I've never, I don't remember a time when so many people cared about, I don't know, I don't ever remember famous politicians when I was a kid. Maybe like a president or like the speaker of the house or something. But dude, we like, are these people even politicians now or are they like TikTok stars? (laughs) With so much division going on, people I think are looking for leaders because yeah. that's constantly what the media is sowing is division, you know? Yeah. You are different because of your sex, your gender, your race. All this stuff makes you all different. They really push that narrative. And so I think when that's the case, it makes people fall into extremes. And I think they can turn rock stars out of politicians when that, that was really sort of... I don't ever remember being political at all when I was young growing up. It was like you had things that you believed in and you had, you know, your basic core principles, but it wasn't like you were die hard about, you know, one political movement or the other. You just sort of lived your life, you know? Right. But now it seems like everybody falls, you know, one way or the next. So. And it didn't matter with your friends, right? Like, no. I mean, dude, for no. a prime example, I was committing crimes and doing drugs all those years, but no, like... Nobody, it's not like I came up here and people were like, don't talk to Tyler. He's, yeah, that's that guy that works for John that's all fucked up. It's like, right. no, I'm just, he's still that's people. Right. Like, we're all just people. That's right. But man. it's, uh, yeah, I don't remember that. I don't remember punk rock, meaning I had to be allegiant to the radical leftist movement when I was right. a kid. Like, right. I, uh, there was all kinds of people that were punk rock. That's right. And yeah. I, I, you know, it's like, we're all just working class people. Like, it didn't yeah. have to be, even like you, you're just, yeah, you've been a working class artist now for years for working class people like you've your art is affordable to the people in this culture and that's what's fucking in a day where you see people like do shit and it's like no I want $17,000 for this it's like well, I, yeah. I can't afford that no you can't and people like that. get mad at me I've, I've tried to buy art from people in Kansas City it's like dude I'd love it it's just that's the same way with the cars you know yeah, it's right. like that's what that rat rod thing did is it is it made it so it's like it was cool to build a 33 Plymouth. Right. When it was like maybe not so much in like the uh, the mid 90s was that so cool to do that. Right. It was like, oh, it's not a 32 Ford. It's not a Model A. Oh, you know, and it's like but now but now with that, it's like it makes it affordable and accessible. And that's a, a cool thing. You know? Yeah. No, that's awesome. And that's that's what keeps everything going. Like, we watch the price of everything right now. The prices are mm-hmm. fluctuating and people are, you know, you get those guys that are like, oh, you know, because I'm big into old vans. Yeah. So it's like a big thing now where people buy them. And they're like, I got to have the most amount of them. It's like, you don't always have to. Like, that's true. You bought it for $1,000. You don't have to make 20000 It's not a $20,000 car, right. guys. Like, let's <laughs> get it together. Right. Well, I know we got to, you got to get back to your table. Um, what are your social media? Uh, it's all just Max Grundy. 
you could search Max Grundy and, and I'm on there and my, okay. my website's maxgrundy.com and yeah. Hell yeah. Max, Come follow thank me. you. Follow him, guys. Pleasure. Thanks for I love time. You, brother. It's good. All these years still knowing you. Always. I'm glad to have you in Kansas. Glad to be I in gotta, the Midwest. I got to come down and see you, and we got to get you up to Kansas City. Thanks for watching.